Hello there lovely people, it's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today we're going to look at the very best 3DS games that have ever been made. Because I don't think there are going to be any more. At least not many. Yes, that's right, we're going to be looking at the 31 best 3DS games. Why 31? Well, we did 21 last time with the Switch, and there are even more games for the 3DS. And my bosses said so. Few ground rules to make it interesting, though only one game can be featured from a main game series. For example, you can't have Pokemon X and Y, and Pokemon Amiga, Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. But we are going to allow things like Super Mario 3D Land and New Super Mario Bros 2, because they're very different. Although they're the same franchise, they're not really, sort of. It's a bit loose. Also, these games are in no particular order. However, we have put together a top five that will go on after the first 26. Because reasons. But anyway, enough waffling, let's dive right into things. I'm fairly certain I've lost track of the number of years that I've been saying we need a Metroid 2 remake, and now we finally do. Metroid Samus Returns is probably everything you could want from a 2D Metroid game. It does follow a slightly different formula to things like Super Metroid and the original Metroid, but nevertheless, it is still phenomenal. It remains so loyal to the original source material and yet throws in so many new things that make it far more than just a remaster. Buy this or die. It's so peaceful. You know, Shulk, I hope every day can be like this. Always. I don't know whose idea it was to take one of the biggest Wii games ever released and shrink it down onto the new 3DS, but good on you. This game is just bursting with content and every single second of it is as enjoyable as the last. Well, nearly. Colourful characters, brilliant storytelling, the whole thing is just an absolute joy from start to finish. Long ago, God took away song as punishment for mankind's arrogance. Stella Glow is something you cannot miss. The whole game is brimming with personality. It's smart, stylish, and incredibly satisfying. There's a whole underlying musical motif to the whole thing, and it works really, really well. It is very similar in some regards to games like Final Fantasy Tactics and the Fire Emblem series, and yet it manages to carve its own path. Skip this one, and you'll be missing out. Everything the best I can. It is such a shame that Ever Oasis came out so late into the 3DS's life. With the Nintendo Switch, it got totally overlooked by so many people, but it is a game like no other. Take Monster Hunter, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, and add just a sprinkling of Zelda, and you've got a vague idea of what this is, maybe. It's incredible fun, hugely engrossing, and just outright a beautiful game. My god, I hope it comes to Switch. <laughs> What happens if you take a Mario game and you say let's not quite do 3D and not quite do 2D? Well, it sounds like a disaster, but you get Super Mario 3D Land. And it's good enough to be on this list, because it's bloody lovely. It really does straddle that line between 2D Mario and 3D Mario, and yet it works really, really well. This is yet another instance of people thinking that Nintendo's had a terrible idea, and Nintendo proving everyone wrong. Unfortunately, it doesn't have Cat Mario, but you know what? It's pretty damn good anyway. This is the story of Yggdrasil in the land of Arcania. Children of men passed down an ancient fable. At this point, I don't think it's any secret that I am not the biggest fan of the old anime style. But you know what, for a game like Etrian Odyssey 5 Beyond the Myth, I am willing to make an exception. Atlas is at it yet again with a classic dungeon crawler with modern stylings, and you know what, it's something pretty special. Again, I'm not so keen on the art style, but it's the gameplay that matters, you know? In pursuit of its legends, the weight of the world is on your shoulders. Expertly designed, heavy weapons. Pilot ready to kick some butt. Kirby! 
Kirby, Kirby, Kirby. Just when we think we've got him pegged, he comes up with a new gimmick that is actually really, really good. Planet Robobot allows Kirby to absorb powers through the medium of a mechanoid and not just his gob for a change. The idea itself on paper sounds a little bit weak, but in practice it's stunning and genuinely quite different. Frenzy, a horsepower hullabaloo. I think it's pretty clear that there had to be a Fire Emblem game on here, and it was a pretty tough choice between Fates and Awakening. And even though Fates is advanced enough to have characters with feet, we had to give it to Awakening just because of Krom. Alright, not just because, but he is pretty, isn't he? Good morning. Rune Factory 4 is a unique kind of game. It's sort of a combination of farming simulator, dating simulator, and action RPG sort of blended together in a weird way. But you know what? They've somehow made it work. It's certainly not going to be for everyone, but if that sounds like your cup of tea, then you would be bonkers to give this a miss. Yeah. All right, I'll admit it, I hadn't really heard of Kid Icarus until Smash Bros. And I'm gonna remain pretty steadfast in saying that I don't really like Pit as a character. But Kid Icarus Uprising is an insane amount of fun. It's fast paced, it uses the 3DS in an interesting way, and overall there's nothing quite like it out there on the system. It is one of the earlier games for the 3DS, but it's aged surprisingly well. We're back on the farming sims, except this time Fantasy Life allows you to do pretty much whatever you want. It's not the most straightforward of games given the amount of jobs that there are available, but if you give it the time, it will reward you. Yep, they went and did it. They brought Super Mario Maker to the 3DS when nobody really expected it. I mean, people wanted it, but I don't think we actually expected it to happen. It does like the Miiverse connectivity, which is a bit of a shame, but now so does the Wii U version, so... Uh. It also comes with a load of extra new content, and whilst none of that's gonna set the world on fire, the actual editing tool itself is incredibly substantial and superbly well-refined. <laughs> Even though Tropical Freeze will stand as one of my favorite platformers ever, Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D is definitely a game worth investing in. For me personally, it has a bit of an edge over the Wii original, simply because it doesn't require you to use any waggle controls or even blow into the microphone, which I genuinely thought they would make you do. It's insanely good fun, and if you like the original Donkey Kong Country, you cannot miss this one. Please bestow your light upon this mystic gauntlet. Congratulations, young man. You are now a samurai. Are you an RPG fan? If you haven't heard of this game, I don't really think you are. This game is vast, and it is so engrossing that you will lose yourself in a matter of moments. I genuinely don't think there's a 3DS game out there that's this ambitious and manages to keep its theme so consistent. Without even researching it further, just, just buy it. may not be as pretty as the Wii U original, but one thing that Poochie and Yoshi's Woolly World has that the original does not is just that. Poochie. 
and that's hard to say no to. This is essentially the same original Wii U game, but with additional stuff and a few little things taken out. But on the whole, it runs and plays beautifully. And yes, as I said, it doesn't look quite as good, but even then, I still think it looks damn tasty. <laughs> Choosing this one was a really tough one for me. I have played so much Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, and yet not that much of Generations, well, at least in comparison. The addition of the hunting styles opens things up enormously and basically makes it so that you've got maybe three times as many weapons. I mean, not really, but it's kind of like that. And just like every other Monster Hunter game before it, it really rewards player understanding above all else. You can have the best armor, the best weapon, it doesn't matter. If you go up against an enemy you don't know, you are probably going to get seven shades of something knocked out of you. It's hardcore, but my god is it worth it. Go for number one! This entry does feel a little bit of a cheat because it's so many games in one, but you know what? I don't care. It's got everything you could want from a classic Sega collection. It's got Power Drift, Poyo Poyo, Sonic, Thunderblade, Galaxy Force, Alter Beast, and Fantasy Zone 2. If you're a retro Sega fan, you just can't go wrong. You know, he doesn't exactly look like your governor. If anything, it looks the other way around. What's the story? The story of how me and the Gov fell in together is an epic tale, full of laughter, frills and tears. If, like me, you haven't really played any Dragon Quest games before this one, then do not worry because this is as good a place to start as any. Memorable characters, colourful style, fun combat, this has got the whole kit and caboodle. In fact, if we're being brutally honest, this isn't just one of the best RPGs on 3DS, it's one of the best RPGs pretty much full stop. It is a remake of an older game, but to be honest, it might as well be a brand new title. It's had that much done to it. Skip this one at your peril. At last, at last we can finish off that despicable Doormagus. Do you like Mario? Do you like golf? Then have we got a treat for you. Yes, Mario Golf World Tour is pretty much the quintessential Mario Golf game. Much like the Mario Kart series, it just seems to be getting better with age. Unlike the Mario Party series. It's a golf game with Mario. Do I really need to say any more? Whilst the original game may not have aged all that well, although I still absolutely love it, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon is a cracking adventure. It takes on a slightly different format than the original, instead being spread out over multiple mansions rather than one, and it's more of a sort of a mission, challenge-based affair rather than a standalone adventure, but even so, it's Luigi's Mansion. <laughs> Rhythm games come and rhythm games go, but Rhythm Heaven seems to stick around. It's got a very Japanese style, I think it's safe to say, but that kind of unusual weirdness in the eyes of a Westerner works superbly. It's oddly similar in some regards to games like WarioWare, only much more fleshed out with each individual game. But it's not the only rhythm game on this list, no sir.
Alright, if you know about the original game, then Theatre Rhythm Final Fantasy Curtain Call may seem like a sort of a cheap and lazy expansion. But actually, even though it's not technically a sequel, it almost could be. The amount of additional content is staggering, frankly. The controls are tight, the music's great, and the new modes add a fresh and different perspective. If it's a choice between this and Rhythm Heaven, you're gonna need to speak to someone far more qualified than me. Yeah, this one is a little bit of a Marmite game. It doesn't actively do anything extraordinary and the whole sort of coin motif kind of falls flat for some people, but for a lot of other people it is just a really solid Mario game. At the very least they're trying something new with all the gold coins and everything, and I think for me personally it, it works, but I can see why it wouldn't for others. If 3D Mario, or at least semi-3D Mario isn't really your kind of thing, then New Super Mario Bros 2 may just be your kind of thing. Harmony, order? <laughs> I deny your world and everything in it. Crumbs and blimey when you think Square Enix have run out of ideas, they come up with a franchise like Bravely Default. It's a fresh, original, and just downright incredibly enjoyable JRPG that proved that Square isn't just going to rest on its Final Fantasy laurels. For us, the sequel only just about beats the original, but really, it's not by a lot. There'll be nothing stopping us now. Onward, Agnes' Avengers! <laughs> Agnes' Avengers, move out! We need your help, Star Fox! Andros has declared war! He's invaded the Lilat system and is trying to take over Corneria! I know, I know, it's a port. Ports are boring. Ports are this, ports are that. You know what, let's just, let's just forget that this is a port for a second. Because if we do, we are pretty much sitting on the best Star Fox game that has ever been made. The original Star Fox 64 was far from perfect, but this fixes a lot of the issues that the original had, including performance. Also, it looks better, you can take it on the go. It's not a perfect game, but honestly, it probably is, as I've said before, the best Star Fox game we have. So if you're like me and you love Star Fox, why haven't you already got this? <laughs> I can just imagine the meeting at Nintendo. They sat down saying, what should we do with this new, fresh and original 3D enabled console? I know, let's make an exclusively 2D styled game. It is a bit of an odd decision to go all the way back to 2D Zelda after having so many 3D and given that the 3DS is more than capable of running 3D Zelda games. But even so, you know what? It's just a, it's just a different style of game, you know? And my God, is it good. It's about as non-linear a Zelda game as you can get without getting into Breath of the Wild territory but I don't think that would run on the 3DS. I mean, just about runs on the Wii U. But A Link Between Worlds is just an outright beautiful game, a wonderful love letter to the original A Link to the Past, but at the same time being entirely its own thing. And you know what, I'm just, I'm just gonna say, it, it's bloody refreshing not to have Ganon as the main villain. Ganon, you are fun, don't get me wrong, but you know, it's, it's, it's just nice to have a change. <laughs> Oh, well, that's the first 26, but what about this top five we've been bleating on about? Well, don't worry, here it is. It's true that 8 has kind of usurped it entirely because it is a newer game on a bigger system and it's also still portable, but you know what? Mario Kart 7 is still a cracking lot of fun. 
coming away from Wii, which basically rewarded random number generation, Mario Kart 7 was far more about skill and being able to find your way around the track, and it had some cracking ones as well. I've said cracking twice now. The highlight for me personally would probably be Woohoo Island, but honestly there are loads of really, really classic ones. The whole gliding mechanic and things like that, it sounded a little bit gimmicky when we first heard about it, but you know what? When it's actually in the game, it fits in almost entirely seamlessly. It's still great fun to play today, and until 8 and 8 Deluxe, it was easily the best Mario Kart. <laughs> You know what, I think for the technical achievement alone, this game deserves to be in the top five. If you told me when Brawl came out that the next Super Smash Bros would be on a portable system, especially one as, let's be honest, underpowered as the 3DS, I would have called you a big fat liar. Or a little skinny liar, depending on your weight. And yet, somehow, Nintendo managed it, and it runs like a dream. Is it as good as the Wii U version? No, of course it's not. But at the same time, we have got Super Smash Bros wherever we like. And until they inevitably bring it to the Switch, this is as good as we're gonna get. And my goodness gracious goggly goodness, is it good. We had a long and hard debate about this one because at the end of the day, there are so many Pokemon games out there for the 3DS. Which one is the best is entirely a subjective opinion. We ummed, we ahed, and we thought about it time and time again, and we came to the conclusion that really, it is gonna be Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. The original Sun and Moon were far more revolutionary and brought in a lot of new mechanics, and so the change up to Sun and Moon was far greater and much more substantial. And you could argue that Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon feels kind of like a bit of a cash grab, but if you put the two games side by side and just take them for what they are, you can't deny that Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon are the better games. But who am I kidding? Everybody's going to be arguing about it in the comments anyway. <laughs> All right, now bear with me because I'm well aware that this seems to break about five of the rules that we set out at the very start of the video, even though I'm not sure there were even five. We were entirely deadlocked as to whether include Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask, and we came to the conclusion that we can't not include both. For me personally, Majora's Mask wins it fairly easily. I do genuinely think that it is the better game over Ocarina of Time. But there were many people in the team who also argued the complete opposite. And so, rather than give them each a slot, we decided to combine the two in a single slot to make sure that we're still kind of technically within the rules. Maybe. And I don't think I need to tell you that these are both outstanding games! They fix pretty much every single issue with the original N64 versions, and then some. If you're playing on the new 3DS XL, you can even play with the little nubbin little nipple controller stick thing. Meaning you can finally appreciate Terminator and Hyrule in the glory that they really deserve to be from the very start. Why am I even talking about these games? You know they're both excellent, you know they're both worth having, so just, well, if you haven't got them, What's wrong with you? There was a lot of talk about which game should be in number one, and eventually we came to the conclusion that it has to be New Leaf. Animal Crossing is a series that has longevity like nothing else out there, except, well, other similar sort of simulators like Stardew. 
that's not on the 3DS. The original game came with an insane amount of content, and then they threw everything up in the air again with the Welcome Amiibo free update. The fact that it's on a portable system and you can just pick it up and play it, take it with you wherever you go, and just quickly open it up, play for five minutes, and then put it down again, just suits the game so well. There are people out there who bought the game at launch and are still playing it today. I'm not sure I can really say that with confidence about any of the other games on here. It introduced so much new stuff to the formula, yet remained entirely loyal to the original games as well. It's simply the best Animal Crossing game there has ever been, and in our opinion, it's the best game on the Nintendo 3DS. Oh, well, there you go. Those are the 31 best 3DS games for the 3DS. But what do you think of this list? Do you think that it's absolutely tip-top spot on, or do you think that it's complete and utter hogwash? Let us know down there in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you slave over a hot computer for the 31 subscribe buttons, specifically ours, and be sure to check out NintendoLive.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo-related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye. Oh,